Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brother's Creed Podcast. We're talking about motivation, experiences, and exploring the world around us. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we have an episode. Uh, we interview uh, Joel from Let's Read Podcast. He reads uh, kind of paranormal stories and scary stories. And uh, sometimes he does crime stories or, or thriller stories. Uh, and he is a true storyteller i said story a lot of times that time but you know it was a great podcast he talks to us about a lot of different stuff he is very knowledgeable he's been around doing this since 2014 uh, he's got a youtube channel with quite a few followers uh and so he's got great videos there his his uh podcast videos are, are, episodes are actually really long they're about three hours but he just tells story after story of uh interesting stuff so i that's how i found him he shares with us some of his uh, favorite stories and uh, we talk about some spooky stuff, but we also just talk about uh, things generally and, and how he uh, has grown his audience and uh, and where he's at today. So it's a great episode. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's do it. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in the pocket. We will not go quietly into the night. They tell me you're a man with true grit. I am the one who knocks. Don't ever tell me what I can't do, ever! That's how winning is done! All right. Uh, Today we have guest Joel with us. He has a successful podcast, YouTube channel, uh, tells some, some amazing stories. Uh, Joel, the name of your podcast is the Let's Read podcast. Also, Let's Read on YouTube. Um, welcome. Thank you for taking your time to talk with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I just want to say I, I found your podcast. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm all about like if I mow, every time I mow the lawn, I listen to kind of like just spooky stories, and uh, I found your podcast. One I liked it because it sounds like for the most part you read stuff that's like actual people submit stories and mm-hmm. their true stories or, or things you find on Reddit. So I like that. And then also, I, if, if, if I can say this, you have a very smooth voice too. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's something I didn't realize until I stuck my face into a mic, you know what I mean? It's, it's just funny. <laughs> uh, so, well, c- can you tell us about uh, how you got started with all this? Uh, maybe, maybe start about uh, what, uh, what got, got you kicked off doing this? Yeah. So, um, back in, so, you know, I worked in like healthcare, uh, for, for a while and, and for a while while doing, um, YouTube stuff on the side, but, uh, essentially I was, I was moved out of my parents' house for the first time, you know, back in like 2012 or 13 or whatever, started my first job in healthcare. And then, um, I moved in with some friends and they were always into YouTube. You know, they did a lot of like comedy skits and stuff and they were always trying different things to kind of like, blow up or whatever you know we all are you know and um i remember you know just seeing them kind of participating in it and thinking like maybe i could try my hand at this you know and uh i was just trying to brainstorm stuff like based on what i observed was successful on youtube and i noticed a lot of like what was successful is like doing a lot of content at the time you know and i mean it might not be quite the same now but and i thought to myself like what's something i could see myself doing that wouldn't burn me out but I could just give it a whirl and I kind of saw like an open like a market um where that wasn't really like filled yet and with like reading stories and I thought oh maybe I could just like read stories on YouTube I don't see that too often with like audiobooks and stuff on on there uh Mm -hmm. and um but lo and behold uh shortly after starting the channel uh I stumbled across the creepypasta community uh with a bunch of really really popular names on there and I thought to myself, oh, okay, you know, and initially I was reading all sorts of just weird, random stuff. Like my first ever video was like Wikipedia pages and things like that, because I didn't know what I could read. And um, and then that evolved into doing creepypasta. And then I actually started to have some, some success with it. And um, that, yeah, over time kind of evolved into this new trend that was popping up with like true scary stories um, where people would the subscribers would submit their own personal experiences. And um, yeah, that's just kind of like the direction I started. And it's sort of like, that's where I really started to find my traction was during that um, 
niche, uh, the evolution of that. And yeah, it's kind of just where I've been ever since. That's awesome. And now, now how many, you know, at this point, I know you release quite frequently. I, I see you do YouTube videos. You're, you're also on TikTok. Like, what is your cadence like? How many times do you come out with your podcast and then videos? With yeah. As, um, so there's a new video on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then with um, podcasting, that was kind of something that I almost feel like I could probably do more frequent. But basically what happens with that is I take the content from the YouTube channel um, in the past I send it to someone who remasters the audio and kind of like ups the quality of it a decent amount. And then um, I'll do larger compilations of that audio um, over there every other Tuesday at noon. <laughs> so. Yeah. And those are typically a couple hours long. So it's just like a, a accumulation of a bunch of stories that. Right. Exactly. So, so that, yeah. what, what was it about, <clears throat> you know, you kind of evolved into that kind of, spooky eerie type story that what was it about that type of story or that genre that really kind of enticed you to to read those types of stories yeah you know i think initially it was just it seemed as if though whenever i was reading it seemed as if though that that's what the market you know that i was trying to direct myself towards was interested in mm -hmm. and um you know i didn't realize that as I tried it, that my voice just sort of like felt more naturally inclined and being creepy. Um, you know? <laughs> that versus like uh, wedding stories or something. Right. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I could do a little bit of a cheery thing, but sometimes it's like out of my wheelhouse, I think. But um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then from that point, I think, yeah, definitely the paranormal stuff caught my attention the most just because it was like something that I was like more uh, interested in uh, as a person. And um Unfortunately, as of more so lately, paranormal stories are not something that my like wider audience as is as interested in, I guess you could say. So I've kind of like pulled back from that, not quite as frequently. Um, and it's mainly on YouTube, just because like, the sad thing about YouTube is that it, it is sort of a pattern based algorithm that like, when you start to see one video doing poorly, it, you know, you kind of like, pull away from it and kind of get pushed down a specific niche because that's sort of what continues to please your current audience, which then enables the algorithm to expand you to a newer, newer audience sort of thing. So like, even though I do really like the paranormal stuff, probably the most, I think, um, unfortunately at this point, uh, I probably usually stick more to like the true scary stuff, like the ones that might have like stalkers or weirdos or things of that nature, you know. Well, you got yeah. you got to follow the crowd to a certain extent. I mean, you got to you got to give the people what they want. Yeah, yes. And those yeah. are those are creepy too. I mean, and they're not necessarily paranormal, but you know, like where people are getting stalked or you've told stories about people going, you know, vacationing in different countries and like try almost getting kidnapped or you know, people finding weird stuff in the dumpsters and the, the dumpster or they're yeah. throwing stuff away behind Arby's or something like that, you know? Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, how do you, I know you said it, when you first started, you started just reading you know, Wikipedia pages and, and different things like that. How do you get the majority of your content? Do you have uh, listeners that are sending you in interesting stories or uh, how is that? I know you have a, uh, I think you have a website that you, or people can submit stories to you individually. Um, right. Where, where do you get that content from? Yeah, usually um, it's like a mixture of the two where I have a subreddit, which I just found was like more it's kind of like a simpler process for people to submit stuff. But um, still, people are kind of like um, very, very uh, interested in just emailing their stuff. I think that's just easier for most of the audience. But yeah, so they'll email it. They'll um, uh, send it through Reddit. Uh, I'll also ha I also have a person who goes out and like asks permission from different people Um on on like different subreddits and that kind of thing uh i recently started kind of getting someone involved to do a lot of research on like true crime stuff so like you know you like tomorrow's video that i'm going to be working on is um like true crime stuff that happened around like halloween um so yeah they a uh, friend of mine does the majority of the sort of research and writing on that and um yeah so it's kind of you know quite a few sources sort of just sending out the tentacles cool. in different directions yeah nice that that's awesome man so uh, you know one of the things that we had talked about was uh that we were love want to 
you know, you've read thousands, probably thousands of stories. I mean, some of your your podcasts are literally like three hours long of just packed full of stories. Mm-hmm. That's why I listen to it on like two times speed when I'm on the lawn and I get through oh, like yeah. <laughs> most of it and I'm like, oh man, I just I wish I could mow the lawn longer. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, you've heard lots of stuff and, and one of the things we had, I, I wanted to ask you was, uh, and, and you, that you've brought to the episode this evening is a, a couple of stories maybe that have really just stuck in your mind of all the ones that you read or, or ones that you're like, yeah, that I feel like really weird about that one. Or can you, can you share, um, maybe can you share one of those that you've brought with us? Yeah. Um, there was, uh, I have two in mind that just like really stuck out to me. Um, unfortunately I don't have the text on me right now, but I, I would be okay to read it. But, uh, the one just to kind of give you the gist of the one particular one was more in the line of like the true scary story style ones that I read. And that one was about like, actually from the perspective of an individual's like uncle who grew up during like, I think like post-World War II USSR type situation. And, uh, you know, he was taking a train uh, to a particular place um, in the USSR and he missed his train and, I guess some sort of like mysterious elderly, I don't even know you like babushka, you know, woman, you know, uh, came up to him and said like, she can, it was late at night and said, you can stay at my uh, place. And he didn't really like, couldn't really, I guess, see the identity of the individual at the time, but it looked like a nice old lady. So um, followed her back and then, um, you know, stayed in this one board, this one room. And then, in, in the midst of the night or whatever, like as they were asleep and maybe midnight or whatever, uh, the, this uncle goes to exit the room to find the bathroom on the second story floor. And, but for some reason, when he goes to turn the knob, the door to his room is locked, like from the outside. And that was, you know, kind of startling. So like they started to hear somebody like coming, you know, up the stairs or down the hallway, something like that. And so they, his first thought was like, okay, I'll hide under the bed. And then when he goes to hide under the bed, he ends up like not being able to do so because there's, you know, literally a, a dead body underneath that bed that then freaks him out even further. Uh, And so he essentially goes to open the window, which does pry open. And then, uh, then like as and this this is i don't i just find it interesting because it just like plays out like a movie or whatever but like he's hanging on the edge um you know just kind of like observing like from the inside the room and i think it's i think before he even went out to the (laughs) the window he took that dead body and like put it in like in his place in the like bed itself the bed like right like pillows (laughs) oh my gosh yeah Yeah. which would be pretty gross but i don't know this is how it played (laughs) out and then like as he's like hanging from the window, he's observing um, the the old, you know, USSR woman like pulls down her um, old like, uh, you know, uh, winter clothes or whatever and reveals that it's actually an old man, you know, a short old man. And then like has an ax and then just starts like taking the ax to the, the body that's on the bed. And then this terrifies the guy. So he drops the two stories and like, cracks his ankle and then he's got a freaking you know uh it back out of there right you know and uh, i don't know why it just like it, it played out very much like in you know sort of tales from the crypt style like story <laughs> even though it probably was to a degree embellished but i just thought it was <laughs> very very funny and interesting at the time um and terrifying oh, wow. if that was the, and just like the ussr setting is just i don't know always been fascinating to me um, oh yeah it's interesting how even like even i mean people are psycho enough themselves like are ourselves we're crazy enough to where sometimes you don't even need the whole paranormal aspect yeah. there's just some crazy people out there that like you said i'm sure there's like some embellishment with some of these stories and things like that but you know there's got to be a little bit of truth somewhere and mm-hmm. with a lot of these and even if there is, is a smidgen of truth it's kind of like wow that's kind of crazy right right yeah. i think a lot of people kind of derive like when they listen to my stories they, I don't know, it puts them on edge, but they also kind of describe some of them as like, like lessons, you know what I mean? Because I feel like all the stories have some degree of lesson that you can be like, okay, I will not go stay at some random babushka's house, you know, in <laughs> USSR. Yes. Yeah, because you're sometimes of what strangers are offering you. Right. Uh, 
totally. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, we did an episode on, on on Chernobyl. We talked about the the Chernobyl oh, okay. disaster, and uh, th- that was uh, you know th- th- an interesting time and interesting place. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Chernobyl itself is it's just inherently creepy with you know all that happened there. Yeah, I never got to watch that show. I heard it was really good. It's good. It was excellent. It's good. Yeah, on oh, HBO. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah. So a, a question that I kind of had, and, and this might be a little bit of a reach. So if it mm-hmm. is, just just tell me. But um, so there are certain people that are more, and this is more probably along the lines of uh, paranormal or or maybe just being observant in your surroundings. But um, there are certain people that are more susceptible to, uh, let's say paranormal encounters or you know have stories uh, usually if a person has one or two paranormal stories they usually have four or five right yeah um or you have somebody that that doesn't really have any you know not that they don't believe in it but um with you having kind of read through and and communicated with all these people and their stories and everything else um have you ever had any types of experiences that kind of being around the whole paranormal, I guess, industry or genre, you yourself have had any experiences with that? You know, mine are kind of weird. Um, a little we bit. We like weird. Like, Weird's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, in They're the sense paranormal, of like, in the sense. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> True sense of the word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the one that I had was back in college and, and sometimes you like, I, I try to think um, skeptically, but at the same time, like, because I've, read so many people's personal experiences i can't possibly imagine that people would i guess to a some degree like like waste their time like like to such a degree of individuals wasting their time making up stuff you know what i mean but not that that can't be discounted but i guess in the sense that like i've heard so many anecdotal experiences of the paranormal that i can't help but like ponder that there is something about this reality that we don't understand you know what i mean and um but yeah like uh, for me back in college I and and for a while after that I used to have um, a lot of like sleep paralysis experiences um, and it may have just been because like you know I went to nursing school and I was just like it was the hardest you know yeah. type of schooling to that point that I had done you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, just because I was not good at uh, academia and all that kind of stuff and like Um, I just remember I was always stressed out. So some people would say that maybe it was the stress that sort of manifested in some sort of physical, uh, phenomena, but, um, I don't know. It was, it was, it was as if though, like I would wake up yeah, and just be completely paralyzed and feel as if though there was some sort of like external presence, you know what I mean? Like slowly inching its way over the top of me, um, and like communicating in a manner in which was like, like implying, you know, it's intentions i guess you could say through a sense of like hatred or fear or whatever it might be to Hmm. to, you know fill me with fear and um you know it was it was always just very weird i I never like physically saw anything nor did i ever really hear anything even though sometimes i would have like dreams where like something would scream in my ear and wake me up but you know that could have just been um, weird as well um but yeah it was one of those situations where you know, like, and at the time I was, I was going to like church a lot and and things of that nature. And like, uh, I just remember like praying, you know, to Jesus at, you know, in my paralyzed body. And then all of a sudden it's just like, it just like dissipates out of nowhere, you know what I mean? And yeah. yeah. uh, And then, and then from that point, um, anytime that that would like creep back and try to like, I guess like, re you know represent itself um Mm -hmm. in that fashion like it was just i would it was almost like i had an algorithm with like how to sort of just know what it is you know immediately pray and it would just like go away you know what i mean yeah and um that was that was interesting and weird it's kind of Um, uh oddly faith building right (laughs) yeah you know yeah you know it 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 is um and it's weird too because i've had a lot of like faith type experiences that like um like have been cool but it's just like i don't don't know what it is but like as the years ago go on it's like i feel bad because i realize like there's something about humanity where we just have really really short short memories you know what i mean where we just forget things and i mean you can 
you can see that on TV, like they're complaining about one thing one day and then everybody's mad about it and then they just forget about it the next day. You know what I mean? And oh yeah. Yeah. Same. Well, yes. the mind's, the mind is a really powerful thing. Like the other day or Jared and I's last episode, uh, we were talking, we talked about some, some scary stories that we thought were kind of cool. And it was funny because whenever I was doing my research, I was sitting in my room and I was, or I was sitting at the desk and in the office and I was kind of going through just reading a bunch of stories, trying to find out like, well, this is th- this one and this one and that one. And it was interesting because as I was reading through a couple of these, like I would kind of get lost in the story and then I'd have to like turn around real quick because it'd be like, you just get like this weird feeling like oh, there's oh, something right. behind yeah. me or something like yeah. that. Have you, have you ever gotten that feeling in like doing research or stuff like that? You're like, ooh, that was a scary one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I, like I've been reading paranormal stories and, and I don't know what it is. They're the ones that fill me with the most like, sense of dread you know as i'm reading them like true scary stories you know i would never want to be in the situations a lot of those people are in oh yeah even though in my mind you know you get sort of like a tough guy sensation like well, I don't know, you know I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll, i can defend myself but i don't you know i have no combat experience at all so that would not go well <laughs> but um i can anyways, scream really loud yeah <laughs> yeah i've got great lungs <laughs> um but like, it was crazy. One time I was like record, this is at my old house. Like I was recording uh, paranormal stuff. And once again, yeah, this could just be a coincidence, but uh, all of a sudden the light, the light bulb above me just exploded. And like, you know, it was kind of one of those ones that are like covered by glass. And like mm-hmm. this, like, I just saw like this little spark from the explosion, like fall down to my desk and then, you know, dissipate. But it was just like, what just happened? You know what I mean? It was very, Dang. very weird. Yeah. That is um, weird. Yeah. Those. But, yeah, and maybe well, that's part of the reason I got away from paranormal too. Is it just kind of like <laughs> gets to you over time, you know? Yeah, that's true. You know, um, that, that's true. I think the reason for me why it's so fascinating is just that yeah, you know, I have a very analytical mindset. Uh, mm-hmm. I've you know my education is in data science, and so it's a lot of hard numbers and, and stuff like that, and uh, you know, number crunching analytics. And so for me stuff that is out and I'm a very logical person. And so whenever I approach something, it's a very logical manner. So things that are uh, paranormal or the unseen world uh, that, that is outside of our, outside of us is very fascinating to me because it's unknown. Um, It's hard to measure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of things out there, um, you know, like, you talk to lots of people, uh, and lots of people have different experiences. And sometimes people just don't see don't see what's going on because they don't have the eyes to see, mm-hmm. uh, or the ears to hear. Was that what Christ? That's what Christ said. He, right. he who has the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Uh, and I think that that if if you have a certain um, mindset and you're and you're just being aware of things, I think you'll see things a lot more. Uh, a lot more things are happening. I think that you know. Kind of from from a religious perspective, I, I feel like that there is a battle going on between good and evil in this world, mm-hmm. uh, and, and just the same th- as thing as this, as there is good, uh, there is also evil in this world. And I think there's like things in between too, you know, like when people die, you know, does their spirit linger around for a little bit of while? I don't necessarily think that's good or evil. Um, maybe it's just you know they're not quite gone yet, um, right? And so I, I just that's always fascinated me and. Uh, so I always love hearing stories about that. But you said you had a you said you had a, a second story. I was interested to hear what that one was too. Oh yeah, um, yeah. No, but yeah. The, the thing about sorry to just because oh, that no, that no, tripped in my mind. But the thing about people lingering around that you know, um, at the beginning of the whole COVID thing, like uh, my buddy's mother, like well, I guess she, I guess she passed away like last summer, and it was really tragic just because it was like just imagine like you had a friend and they're like your, their mom is like your second mom. And then all of a sudden, you know, they pass away from something. And, and yeah. it was very early, you know what I mean? Like in the sense that like, like early sixties, you know what I mean? So it's just like kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and she, you know, I don't know, it was just some really strange circumstances occurred during that time frame where I just remember, uh, almost like sort of saying my goodbyes to her and stuff like that, like individually. Uh, and then just like in the middle of the night, um, you know, I was like woken to like, just 
something being like knocked off my like desk into like the trash, which was really weird. Um, but one of the more like really strange aspects was whenever um, I went over to my friend's house where I, I assumed that there would be like, you know, as they say, like things are attracted to like negative energy and that sort of thing. And um, at my buddy's house, you know, this is, um, or I guess his dad's house, parents' house, um, where they were having most of like the sort of like funeral uh, process going on. Um, the, he, he said that him and an old friend of his that was in town visiting, staying with him, they were in the living room. And all of a sudden the <clears throat> front door, like screen door started to kind of like shake. And then there was one of their cats was on the sort of like uh, foot cushion that was in front of them. And it was like following something across the room. And then uh, like there was flowers on a mantle that was near this, the sort of steps and the steps landing that goes upstairs. And he said, he, you know, and I kid you not, he said that all of a sudden those flowers just like flew across the room, like just like got like, th like thrown off as if the whatever saw it was not like happy with it, which like, hmm. you know, we, we, he joked, he's like, yeah, of course, Liz doesn't like those flowers. You know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> but like, you know, who, and, and at the same time, it's like, you never know, like, is it her? Is it something else? You know, because yeah. Yeah. then there was like, a picture of him that he, you know, but he, he used to do like modeling and all this kind of stuff. And like, they would have like some uh, pictures of him on their sort of fireplace uh, mantle. And um, I remember just, I walked over there and I was like, Oh, I remember this picture, you know, that he had uh, from back in those days. And like, and he was, and I'm like, wait, what the heck's this? And like in the picture, uh, the picture itself just had like, it was, you know, it was glass and the, the frame. And it was just like, had a big like crack through it. That was in the form of like an X like over top of his head and um and i'm like what happened here mac and he you know he was like he's like oh what the? he's like i literally just looked at that picture like not even earlier this day and you know you come over and look at it and it's got like a freaking you know crack yeah yeah, yeah crack through it or whatever and that's weird there was just some strange circumstances yeah that like happened to them like you know during that sort of like transitionary process from like her death to like i'm not you know that's the thing is I don't know anything about the paranormal, whether it's like you attract something negative, whether she's sort of like saying her goodbyes, you know what I mean? I have no idea how that yeah. works or if, it, if that's even going on, but um, yeah. so yeah, strange things there. <laughs> um, yeah. Post, that's, that is interesting. Uh, but, have you ever, uh, have you ever uh, had any stories or anybody send you any stories where you're just like, nah, that's made up. And you, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Uh, you know, there's some, t and especially the, I'm like, especially if the grammar is bad, I'm just like, I'm not even going to waste my time with this. Cause it's yeah, just, cause we write the whole thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just assume it's like some teenage teenager who just like wants to get You're their like stuff creative, out there. but yeah, no not happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gotten anything that's just been so creepy or just like, I don't know if I can even read this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happens all the time with like, uh, like true like one of the the second story is the one where it was just like kind of messed me up well like well okay. i guess yeah. there was two of them that were like true crime related but that just are so you you like know that it happened because it was one of those like it's in a criminal report type thing mm -hmm. um and on the news or whatever but um one of them was just about like i think it was in brazil and you know this school board uh there was like one teacher and her husband were at like a school board meeting in the auditorium and their five-year-old daughter was like, I'm going to go to the bathroom or whatever. And they're like, Oh yeah, it's fine. You know, they've been to the school. I don't I, countless times before never had any issues. And then she doesn't return, you know, and uh, you know, everybody's like scouring looking for her cause it's been quite a while. And then they come to find her like stuffed in a janitor's closet and she's been like stabbed like 50 times. Oh, geez. And it, yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, I don't know, that one just messed me up because it was like, you know, obviously violence against children is just oh, yeah. beyond evil. And like, um, and, you know, to know that it was like someone that they probably knew, you know what I mean? Like within the school system. Um, and I don't even know if they solved that one, to be honest with you. But hmm. it's just, it's just terrifying to think that if you like had kids, like, and you oh, just yeah. like, casually or like yeah that's you know go have some uh, some degree of independence and then just something absolutely heinous like that happen it's just terrifying um, oh yeah totally 
especially in today's world, you just have to be extremely vigilant. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it it is scary as a parent to to because it's hard to have, especially if you have a couple kids or whatever, to have a constant eye on mm-hmm. like all the time. It's yeah. exhausting, number one, and it's just so easy for something to go awry. I mean, I I think that's not like your story is probably not the not the common thing to happen, right? But right. You know, just for a kid, even a kid to get like snatched up or something like that. I mean, yeah. one of the uh, one of the malls is this really big mall that's in our area. They're like one of the the largest malls for um, uh, like kidnappings for kids oh, okay. and like all this like sex trafficking stuff that's going on. And Yikes. that's scary. Like even yeah. just going there, I'm just like, man, I just got to be extra careful to. I mean, it's really nice, but mm-hmm. it's just it's right next to the freeway. And okay. so if anything were, you know, somewhere to, to grab a kid or kidnap someone, they'll just get on the freeway and they're gone. I right. mean, they can be in a different state in, in an hour, you know, yeah. or less than that. That's terrifying. So. Yeah. It, and you guys, you guys said you both have four kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and it's almost like you got to like send them in packs, you know what I mean? So they can <laughs> look out for each other kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah. Tape, yeah, tape them all together, tie them all together. Right. With yeah. Or something. One of those ropes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, I mean, like it's, it's interesting, you know, like people are, are scarier than most anything else. Like this weekend right. we were going, I was going hiking with my boys out uh, on the mountains and we went out to the mountains. We were hiking on this trail and my oldest two kind of ran ahead um, mm-hmm. and they were just way down the trail and I couldn't even see them. And I was just like kind of mad. Cause I'm like, you know, what if, a bear came up and you, you guys wouldn't know yeah. what to do. I couldn't get to you in time, but even worse, what if some guy was on the trail and he just took you, you know? Right. Uh, and so it's like, you know, it's like the walking dead, the, the true, you know, terror of the show is the people, not yeah. necessarily the zombies. Yeah. Like they're there, but yeah, there's something much more heinous, yes. you know, <laughs> out there. And I remember, yeah, I remember reading a story related to hiking. That was like some random person just like took, razor wire and put it like sort of at head level across the from tree to tree you know what i mean and if you're biking real fast or you're jogging and you're not paying attention you know like some just psychopath even though they might not like directly observe you know the outcome of their terrible action like are just setting traps out there you know oh, geez. Like, they just want to see the world burn right yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's, i had i had heard something and this is you know, maybe a, a public service announcement. This isn't really technically scary, but it's just kind of goes along with that trap thing. If, um, it, in in some areas, if you're driving through, a lot of times what people will do is they'll take like a an egg, a raw egg, and they'll come and they'll throw it at your windshield, like in on the driver's side in front of the driver, and it'll like break, obviously on the windshield. But if you um, if you turn the windshield wipers on and you mix it with water, like uh-huh. it doesn't go away. It just smears so bad to where you can't see out of the windshield. Right. Like you can't, you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. And, and so it'll cause the person to have to stop and then open their car and then try to wipe it with like their hand or something because the windshield wipers, it just, it just smears it. And so they're saying then people will get kidnapped. They'll get carjacked. They'll get robbed. Mm-hmm. They'll get whatever. And so they're saying if everybody, anybody ever did that to your car, don't turn on the windshield wipers because you can see through it if you don't try to get it away. Yeah. Okay. But if you wipe, then it's like, don't it wipe. Just, yeah, don't wipe. <laughs> yeah, no, don't wipe it <laughs> it'll don't it'll wipe smear anything. it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I and yeah, just the panic that you have too whenever you know because yeah. you kind of have to stop because yeah, uh, you kind of lose that, your senses, right? You're like, right. oh shoot, I I can't see, and you know you 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 forget what you're doing. You're not thinking, oh, if I open the door, you think, oh, some hooligan just threw something in my car. You're not thinking, right. if I open the door, then I'm gonna get robbed or something. Exactly, yeah. and an egg is like the definition of just a prankster. You know what I mean? It's, you yeah. never think it'd be like something more nefarious. Because yeah, the other totally. day I was driving, it was raining pretty heavy here, and I was just coming home, about to make a turn off of a main road, and the person in the two lane next to me just. They, they had no idea but it just like shot a bunch of water like heavy onto my windshield to the point where i'm just like instantly blinded and yeah that you know that sense of panic you know you you instinctively hit the windshield wiper you know what i mean like yeah and uh yeah that sense is just briefly terrifying you're like oh gosh i'm gonna rear end somebody or crash and hit somebody i don't even know i remember uh <clears throat> i remember one time i was coming home i was i was probably like i was maybe a senior in high school 
and I was coming home and in our neighborhood, you kind of have to, you drive this certain way and, and, and you get to this stop sign and you can't really, you have to keep going on this road. Like you can't go around it. Mm-hmm. And so somebody had taken, it was a stop sign and somebody had taken, this was like three o'clock in the morning. And someone had taken like a big roll of that saran wrap or whatever. And they had gone from one from the street sign to the stop sign all the way across the road like a hundred times. And it was just like it was this massive thing. And and it was it was pitch black dark outside. And so I couldn't see what was going on. But I kind of pulled up and the headlights looked funny. And I was like, what the heck? And so it was like three o'clock in the morning. There was nobody. It was dead silent, pitch black dark. And I was like shoot i was like i have to get like i can't not i was like i don't want to just run through it you know it looks yeah. super thick and i was like what do i do it was like my dad's car and i was just like <laughs> oh shoot and yeah. so i had a a pocket knife on me and so i got out of the car and was kind of like hello you know trying to be all <laughs> tough or whatever but yeah. i was all by myself and so i kind of walked up and and uh I was like, oh, geez. And so I just took this knife and just like cut it down the middle and and then went and got back in the car. And then as I was pulling away, I saw a bunch of uh, like legs under these bushes that were like Mm -hmm. off to the side. And I uh, like honked the horn and a bunch of little kids came running out from the bushes, like middle schoolers came running out of the bushes. I was like, (laughs) oh, dude, you guys got me. I was scared. I was like. (laughs) I thought I was going to get killed or something. Oh, gosh. (laughs) That's the funny thing. It's like, is it going to be a little kids or a serial killer you never yeah. know well it, that's that's uh <laughs> yeah, a bunch of little high you know middle schoolers or a serial yeah. killer. yeah <laughs> yeah i think uh that was- that's one thing i wanted to say was just that i think the mind is such a powerful thing mm-hmm. um it can play tricks on you so much um and i it, you know we were talking about you can read a story and you're like, oh, you feel like something's behind you or whatever. It's just the mind plays such tricks on people. And, Absolutely. you know, I, I had an experience one time. Um, I was sleeping and I had a dream. And it was like a scary dream. I was running away from these people and I was being attacked. And I was like, it was a nightmare. And in the dream, I got shot in the knee. Okay. And then when I woke up the next day, my knee was like throbbing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I had no idea what had happened. I don't know. I don't know if it was like maybe I had rolled over and whacked my knee on the wall or if like whatever. But my knee hurt for like two, three weeks after that. And it was just like, man, what is going on? And it all tied back to that. I got shot in the knee in my dream. Yeah. When I woke up, my knee hurt. And that, that was like one of the strangest things that I've ever had that it was like this scary experience in my dream that almost like turned into real life like i couldn't explain yeah yeah Yeah. man i had no idea what it was that's crazy yeah uh yeah because i've had that like where it's it's weird how dreams sometimes like something can happen external from your dream and then like almost in real time your dream like adapts to then just like creating a scenario that like perfectly fits that situation but then also the other way where you have that like sensory uh sort of like your your body thinks something's occurring so then it like manifests symptoms that you know perhaps would be reacting to a, a false perception that you were shot in the knee or whatever you know yeah yeah i had a buddy that had kind of a a, a weird experience kind of like that but this one was where um he was he he was kind of weirdly in tune with the supernatural or or something and he would one, one, one night he said that he was like really turning and, and tossing in bed and his wife was like, and he was like, can I talk? Da, 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 da. And then he, and then like his wife's like, what's the problem? What's wrong? And she's like waking up and he's like, Shay, Shay, look, 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 look. And he's like points over to like outside their, that was their master, they're in their master bedroom. So he points to the bathroom. He's like, look, 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 look. And she looks over and the bathroom light turns on. Oh, and, oh wow! Uh, okay, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm just... like, and and then at that point he woke up, and he's okay. like, he's like, yeah. So my wife told me something really weird happened last night, and I was like, <laughs> what happened? And he tells me the story. I'm like, that's crazy. That is nuts. So I, I don't know if the light had been doing that before, but he was just like, look, 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 and then it, it went tink and it turned on. You know? Wow. It's kind of bizarre. I've always thought, yeah, that there's some strange like interconnection between a spiritual world and like the dream world. You know what I mean? And 
I don't really know how those, like you said, it's a difficult thing to measure how to like determine, but I've always seen some degree of like commonality between what you see in your dreams and, you know, something beyond our understanding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just got finished watching that movie Dune. That's just, Oh, cool. Was it good? It was good. It's like a cinematic masterpiece. I feel like was it it was was really, really good. I remember seeing the old one from the eighties and this one like blows that one out of the water. Yeah. It's got a stacked (laughs) cast too. So, uh, it's, it was really cool. I, I would definitely recommend seeing it. That's funny because, you know, when I first started the channel, I was reading, uh, I, I've taken all those videos down now, but <laughs> I must have like 18 volumes from the short story called like Dune Spiced Planet. Oh, and yeah. I was like, yeah, it's, I think it was written by, is it Frank Herbert? Is that the? Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. he's got yeah. like a bunch of books about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I used to read a ton of sci-fi, but that was the one that was like, this was way before I like understood like copyright and that kind of thing. So I had to like take a lot of content down that was sci-fi related. Cause it was all like classic stuff, you know? Yeah. And I just thought like, Oh, this would, I'd be different by reading this, but that was not smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Dune, Dune is wild. And I've always been curious in the Dune universe that there's like, is it just humans and that's mm-hmm. all that exists in the universe or is in like, I don't think so. Arms? No, there's other, there's other types of species of people. Okay. Yeah. No, nobody in the movie that was looked like a real alien, alien like. Mm-hmm. The most look, most look humans, but some of them seem to have different abilities and stuff like that. Okay, that's cool. But I guess for those of you who don't know, and Dune, the main character has like this dream, and his this whole thing is about him having this dream, and it, and it, if it, it's gonna come to pass, and so that's mm-hmm. kind of the main portion of the movie. That's cool. But, um, well, I was gonna ask you. So one of the one of the stories that I love that you tell, uh is about going out in the woods, like hunting stories and stuff like that. Yeah. I've, I've been hunting several times when I lived in Utah, out in, way out in the middle of the Uinta Mountains, uh, which uh, is known for actually its paranormal activity. Uh, okay. And then, and then uh, here, you know, camping and stuff like that. We grew up camping. Ethan and I are both Eagle Scouts, and so we went camping mm-hmm. quite a bit. So uh, that's always kind of fascinating to me is the stories in the woods. Do you have anything that you remember that's kind of like one of those types of wood stories that you're like, oh, man, uh, maybe I'll think twice about going into the woods? <laughs> uh, you know, I wasn't like a super outdoorsy person growing up because it's like like in Pennsylvania, like I like most of Pennsylvania is what they call pencil you know what I mean? Because it's like very rural and that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, like all my family are from like rural areas. But then I just so happened to sort of grow up in like a more yuppie area, I guess you could say like where it was, you know, where kids that were teenagers in my age, like almost none of them were like into hunting and that kind of thing. So like, but I, but I always like, you know, my family on my mother's side, you know, would always try to get me to go do like chases, I guess they called them like with like deer and that kind of thing. And, uh, but then when I was younger, my, my dad would like, I got my, you know, hunting license, went through the whole course on that. Um, and the only thing I ever killed was one squirrel. <laughs> and I remember it was like the most like adrenaline filled experience ever. Cause I was just like, there it is. And I'm like, I have this single barrel shotgun that my dad had had since he was a kid. And I'm, <laughs> blew, so you blew it to smithereens. <laughs> well, it was like, it was from quite a ways away, but like, you oh. know, I, I could, I could barely in my 13 year old body, like pull back the freaking, <laughs> uh, hammer for it. And oh, so yeah. like, I get it. My hands are shaking and I like, pull up and shoot and it's like and it's almost like nothing happened and I was like what the heck and then but then as I get closer I realized like it like pinned itself to the tree you know whatever uh the the bbs or whatever oh, wow. and then, yeah and <laughs> yeah. I think it was just like it was, at that point it was like in shock and then I was in shock and then I had we had to like take it off the tree it was really weird um <laughs> but you know I I feel bad you know I was just like uh you know it, it took me probably till middle school to get into like athletics and that kind of thing so like I was just a fat kid who played video games and didn't like, you know, waking up at 5 a.m. to like 20 degree weather, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's kind of the process. But um, so I feel bad. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of like, I, I definitely have gone, um, you know, hiking and camping and that kind of thing. I hate bears. I hate ticks, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really hate black bears. They're, for the most part, they're pretty like, they leave you alone. But I've always had like a f- semi fear of like, encountering somewhere else in the United States, like a grizzly and then just being eaten alive. That just seems terrible. 
yeah. I, I was I was listening to one of your stories um, about a, a guy who was in uh, Louisiana down on the bayou, and he uh, mm-hmm. was doing he was like a researcher researching some wildlife, and was supposed to go out with somebody, but ended up having to go out by himself and just got lost, and then um, you know came across some kind of some creepy cabin and some creepy people and. Yeah. And there's just some some weird voodoo stuff going on oh, and, right. and yeah. ended up, you know, running away from some, from some people and it's just kind of that, you know, that that adrenaline type of like fear, this mm-hmm. like that's that cert that 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 instinct is 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 crazy. For sure. Yeah. I I can't imagine like especially <laughs> like a I play I don't know if you ever played like Red Dead Redemption or anything like that, but like there's just whole entire like uh you know, inbred clans or whatever that live out in the woods out there. And like, you know, that's yeah. kind of like the vibe yeah, I get like from like the that, hills you know? have eyes yeah, type exactly. stuff. Right, right. That movie was nuts. That movie was actually crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, my wife and I were talking yesterday. Did you know that it's legal all across the United States to marry your second cousin? And it's legal in some states to marry your first cousin. Jeez. So, there you go. We got <laughs> options. Yeah, you got for, options. For all the single people out there, there is hope. <laughs> Plenty of yeah. options, yeah. Well, it's funny. There's like this uh, app where you can kind of uh, track your genealogy or whatever. And, and if other people have that same app, then you can see how you're related. I remember one family reunion, we were kind of sitting around and um, our our wives, were they, they had the app and they're pulling it up. And it was like, oh, you're like my 22nd cousin three times removed or something like that i mean it's oh, just wow. like so far out there that yeah. i mean everyone's related to a certain extent right right yeah um <laughs> but it was just it was weird to see yeah so that is funny but let's yes as the banjo plays um let's maybe transition a little bit and i just wanted to ask you a couple questions about um just kind of uh, podcasting and uh youtube in general i mean you've kind of built you know, you have over eight hundred thousand followers or subscribers on YouTube, and you have amassed a, a, a very large following. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, what's what's the future of of the channel and the podcast? I mean, what what do you where do you see it going over the next couple of years? Yeah, um, so I don't imagine that I'll be deviating too wildly far from the current content and the current schedule that I'm kind of sticking to. Um, I have kind of you know branched out into the true crime realm a little bit which has been nice and refreshing to see that people are interested in it uh, along with like other stuff um disturbing you know pictures with disturbing backstories or like creepy yeah. music with disturbing backstories that kind of thing that's kind of like a trend that i saw popping up that i kind of emulated and that did pretty well so that was nice but um yeah as far as uh hoping to just you know maintain the podcast maybe maybe increase the frequency in which it comes out to like maybe once a week or something because there's quite a bit of like backlog of content that I think, um, you know, I'd be able to keep up with. And um, I recently joined a an application as a featured narrator on there called Chilling. And um, it's actually run by another narrator and a friend of his uh, that they just thought that there's no real like designated application that focuses on scary stories, but then also specifically like a degree of ambience that's like allows mm-hmm. you to like fall asleep. So that's kind of like the major focus on that app. So yeah, cool. Jo- yeah, that's been fun. Joined up with that. Um, I recently started, uh, I don't know if you guys are probably familiar on YouTube. There's like a join button on some channels. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like a yeah. And like, so I recently kind of like launched um, members only content on the channel where I hope to like do a full length video, whether it's like, you know, a fictional story, like one long fictional story or like more true scary stories or paranormal stories. Um, hoping to do like, once a month releases of that for members because initially there was quite a few members that joined during my like live streams and i just felt bad that really the only thing i had to offer them when they became members was like particular emojis that they could put in the chat you know what i mean um so hopefully Uh but the weird thing is is that youtube um whenever i promoted it it like didn't send the notification out to those individuals so i'm gonna have to work figure out a workaround for that until they get that working but um Mm -hmm. other than that like i've had a dream of doing like legitimate voice acting you know what i mean like within more of a professional setting like i always thought it'd be amazing to do anime voice acting or something i always thought that would be fun i have no idea how to really go about that i guess you would have to get like an 
agent and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But uh, as far as the future, it, you know, if, if that ever becomes a possibility or I could figure out how to make that happen, um, I, I think that would be a fun experience other than just kind of like maintaining steady as she goes as far as the YouTube channel is, yeah. <laughs> now, now you mentioned that you had went, gone to nursing school. Are you still doing that or is this your full-time gig now? Um, so this is my full-time gig, but I do try to like maintain my license to a degree on the off chance, you know, just for a rainy day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, yeah. things on the off chance you lose your voice or something. Yeah. I get uh, knock on wood. Right. Right. Exactly. I, I've always thought that I'm like, what irony would it be if I got like esophageal cancer or something oh, terrible? I know don't even say it. A, right. Yeah. That's a dark <laughs> thing to say, but I just, yeah. So um, yeah, <laughs> just keeping it active and trying to maintain that um, just in case. And, Obviously, you know, working in healthcare seems like a nightmare right now, but, um, yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, this has been awesome and I appreciate you coming on and chatting with us. Yeah. Uh, wh one of the things we always ask our guests is, uh, to share a piece of their personal creed with us. Now a creed is a, a set of beliefs or aims that guide someone's actions. Uh, that could be a personal mantra or a quote or other life advice, uh, that you stand by. Uh, would you be able to share a, a piece of your personal creed with us and our audience? For sure. Um, and this is actually something that I developed relatively recently. Like, obviously, I think there was a lot of like internal moral stances that were sort of just innately built into me from, you know, my youth, which I'm thankful for that kind of guided my life. But there was one that really stuck out to me recently. And you guys might be familiar with um, the stand up comedian Dave Chappelle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, really funny show, really funny stand up and stuff. And he recently did like a stand up. Um, he's kind of getting a lot of guff about it or whatever, but yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. It's, it's probably just um, in my mind, I feel like it's like more publicity if anything, you know, cause it draws more people to it or whatever. Um, but anyways, like, but, but the, the funny thing is, is that for as much guff as he's getting, like his positive message is actually focused around the individual that they're acting like he's sort of being disrespectful towards, but it's like, he actually, like, I was very emotionally uh, moved by his story about this person, because one of the things that this individual says is, I'm just having a human experience. And I don't know what it is, like, maybe it's because of the sort of like ambiguity to the statement sort of like covers a wide gamut of, of what it means to be alive. But it just really struck a chord with me, because sometimes it's so hard in this world to with so many different like, belief systems, so many different perspectives. Um, but the one thing that we all can honestly say in all of our like sort of confusion is that like, I'm just having a human experience, you know what I mean? And um, it's one of those things that no matter where we come from, it's like, it's the thing that we share and the thing that we all have to go through from birth until death. And um, I, I, I just felt like I could really relate to that as of recently, you know? Yeah. I like that. I, I I actually watched his uh, his last stand up thing where he he talks about that um, and and his his friend. Uh, yeah, we're all going through our own human experience, right? Everyone mm -hmm. is going through their own situation. Everyone likes and dislikes different things and feels different ways about things. And um, you know, I I think that's that's great life advice. Of you know, we're all going through our own experiences, and so is everyone else. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen people, Netflix employees, losing their minds over whatever it is that he said. So uh, yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe Ethan and I will chat offline about what exactly was said. And oh, what the yeah, that's all was. good. But, uh, I, I, but I agree with it. I totally agree with the sense that like everybody has their own struggles. Um, mm -hmm. Your struggle might be more visible than someone else's struggle. Uh, and so we each need to give each other grace because yeah. uh, you know, who knows what that person might be struggling with. Mm -hmm. absolutely well joel where can uh where can our listeners find you what, what, what's the best way for them to go listen to your content yeah so the uh, number one way usually is uh, on youtube you just type in let's read on youtube i'm the uh, green astronaut skeleton on there even though my current avatar is actually a scuba diver which is really funny because i didn't realize that till later that the art was that and hopefully for a million subscribers um, i'm going to have someone commissioned to like redo the banner and all that so that'd be fun um cool. and then if you're 
if you're listening to podcasts and wherever you listen to that, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, et cetera, you can find me on there at the Let's Read Podcast. So, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess social media, I got, oh, yeah. <laughs> even though I don't really like Twitter that much um, or, you know, social media overall, you can find me on Twitter at Let's Read Creepy or Instagram, Let's Read dot official. Um, sometimes I say silly things on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll definitely tag you in. Uh you know, our Instagram, uh, we'll, we'll put the, some of these links in the show notes. And then we have an Instagram as well. That's a dot brothers dot creed. And we'll be, mm-hmm. we usually throughout the week we tag, uh, we'll post, you know, clips of the episode or just interesting things. And so, uh, we'll, okay. we'll definitely That'd tag in some of those. Yeah. So, you know, thank, thank you for coming on. I appreciate your time. And to all of our listeners out there, let's, uh, build that creed together. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you.